We were on the air here today when the director of the FBI, James Comey, revealed to the country that not only was this gunman interviewed three times by the FBI, he'd been under surveillance for months and undercover informants had been engaging with him. And so we asked tonight, when he bought those guns in recent days, why didn't that federal background check alert the FBI teams who once had their eye on him? Here's ABC's Pierre Thomas on that. Today, the FBI facing tough questions. Could Omar Mateen have been stopped before his murderous rampage? I don't see anything in reviewing our work that our agents should have done differently. But why was the killer allowed to walk into this gun store and buy firearms, despite the fact that he had once been under FBI surveillance for nearly a year, with undercover informants infiltrating his life? The FBI says it never found hard evidence that Mateen was really a terrorist threat, and they had hundreds of ISIS investigations underway. We are looking for needles in a nationwide haystack. Terror investigators weren't flagged when Mateen walked into this gun store three times in the last 10 days, legally buying a handgun and an assault rifle. An evil person came in here. This man held multiple security licenses. He passed the background check. Today, the president frustrated critical information isn't being shared. If they do get alerted, sometimes it's hard for them to stop them from getting a gun. And Pierre Thomas joins us from outside that gun store tonight. Pierre, why wasn't the FBI tipped off during the background check? It would seem to a lot of Americans that there should have been a sharing of information here. David, there are very specific rules about how long the FBI can investigate someone when they don't find evidence of terrorism. And there are limitations on sharing those files once an investigation is closed, even inside the FBI. Today, we got no indication that these policies are changing. David? Pierre Thomas with us tonight. Pierre, thank you.